The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to this season of creation. This is our first Sunday in our month-long celebration of God's presence to us and in us and through us and despite us in this beautiful, beautiful creation, reconciling congregation. We welcome you, our uh, Unconditional love of God is the main thing that we're here to celebrate. So whether you're gay or lesbian, bisexual, trans, uh, queer, people of color, uh, abilities, any ability or immigration status or age or socioeconomic status, we can think of lots of ways where God's people tends to divide, but here all means all. Amen. And I want to say hi to our tech people up there, uh, Randy and Willa. And uh, hi to anyone joining us by Zoom. And um, we're happy for John Jurgensen, our Director of Music Ministries at the Organ and Piano today. And Joyce and Rosalie are our ushers and greeters. And Alan Franks will be our reader. Isn't that correct? I think this morning. Thank you. So uh, if you have prayers, there are prayer cards in the pew. Um, you can write them in the Zoom chat. Um, and at home, if you would have a piece of bread and something to drink in a cup, if possible, for our virtual communion. And also, if you have some kind of a, uh, an herb, I suppose it could be a dried herb if you don't have any fresh ones, but um, we'll need that later for the prayer of confession. So have that in your hand. But first we're gonna begin with a uh, time of silent prayer. You can, I can smell that basil from here. So it's a good time to just open all our senses to the presence of God that comes to us in this space, in this holy sanctuary, and just take the presence of God into every cell of your body in this time of silent prayer.
Please stand if you are able for the call to worship. Your part will be in the bold type. Christ, we gather in your name to worship in this sanctuary called Earth. A planet filled with your presence, quivering in the forests, vibrating in the land, pulsating in the wilderness, shimmering in the rivers. God, reveal, us, reveal yourself to us in this place and show us your face in all creation. Holy, 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 Earth is filled with your presence. Planet Earth, spinning silently through space. Celebrate your beauty and your grace, your special place in our solar system. Planet Earth gleaming green and blue. Rejoice in your ocean currents as they dance and swirl with hope. Planet Earth pulsing with life. Join in praise with all your fauna and flora as they sing their songs to the Lord. Planet Earth enveloped in the breath of God. Bless all your creatures this day with the life-giving breath of God. Planet Earth, our precious, fragile home. Celebrate with all your children God's presence in our planet home. We celebrate the song of the planet. Sing, Planet Earth, sing. If you want to look at the music, it's in the red hymnal there in your pew. Uh, the words will be on the screen. And thank you for wearing your masks when you're singing. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. 139.
Amen. So this is when you're going to need your little piece of herb in your hand if you have one. So as we rub this symbol in our hands, smell, mm, we remember our wonder when we first saw Earth as a green blue planet spinning in space. Oh God, we thank you for our planet home. We remember and confess how we have violated and polluted our garden planet. Christ, born on planet Earth, hear our cry. Lord, we have treated our planet as disposable, as an endless pool of resources, as a mere stopping place en route to heaven. Christ, born on planet Earth, we have turned our greed into global warming. We are sorry. We are sorry. We'll keep a small silence to remember. Christ hears your confession and forgives your sins against the planet. Christ teach us to love earth as our home and the planet as a precious sanctuary. Shalom, shalom, earth is our home. As we come home to earth, Christ have mercy. As we seek to love our home, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. As we seek to care for our planet, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on, and on earth, earth peace, peace with, with all, all creation. creation. Shall we pass the peace of Christ one to the other? So our theme today is lessons learned from leaf and rock. So we each had a leaf in your hand a moment ago. How do your hands smell now? Mm, nice, huh? So over here, we had some basil and some oregano and some thyme. So maybe you smell like spaghetti sauce. And over here, we have some cat mint. And back in the back, you have some more time. And I don't know if you cook with herbs. It's a wonderful way to give your food lots of flavor and some more antioxidants. But I learned this week that all of these herbs are from the same family. They're all in the mint family. Isn't that funny? Almost all the herbs that we cook with are from the mint family. Some of you might have mint in your garden and it tends to go crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> Once it starts growing, you find it everywhere, which I love because we drink, my husband grew up in the South. So we grew, we drink iced tea all, all year round. Hmm. So leaf and rock, these leaves are all different, but it's kind of like people across the earth, right? All the leaves are a little different. They look different. They have different shapes. They're little different colors and they smell different, but they're all in the same family. How about that? So leaf and rock, we also have some beautiful rocks here. But I actually don't know anything about rocks. I wonder if there's a geologist in the house. Oh, there he is, yay. <laughs> Randy Wilson's gonna tell us about these rocks. So he brought in a bunch of rocks today. Let's start with this very pretty one, it's shiny. Yeah, that's a mica schist. It's I don't think you should swear in church. Well, I know, I know. It's a, uh, it's a metamorphic rock. It's, uh, it's formed with uh, a lot of heat Ooh. and a lot of pressure. See, kind of like and a diamond. And so we have the alignment of these super, super cool mica minerals that yeah. will flake off and get all over the place okay. like glitter. Well, then we'll ask the sexton to clean it up. Yes. So <laughs> in other words, sometimes when we're under great deal of pressure, um, we can actually turn out to be quite beautiful. <laughs> and is it the same with this guy? Oh, Ooh, no, that is, that's an igneous rock. Igneous. Uh, very, very crystalline. Mm -hmm. um, and that formed from a melt um, under, um, from the throat of an ancient volcano. 
Oh, my goodness. Uh, I didn't think so, we had any volcanoes around here, though. Well, um, maybe we a did. long time ago. <laughs> long, long time ago. Yes. Wow. Kaboom. I'll have to tell you about the volcano cake I made one time. Oh, yes. It was not on purpose. How about this guy? This one has lots of stripes. You can't see them from here, but they're quite straight. They look like somebody took a straight edge and drew lines right across like that. Right. Well, some people call sedimentary rocks layered rocks. Okay. And layers. Uh, so they form in layers mm -hmm. from uh, the uh, erosion and weathering of other rocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, over time, uh, get carried by wind, water, ice, and cool. uh, deposited in the ocean. Now, these layers uh, what? continue to um, become piled on by other layers and other layers and eventually become rock through the help of uh, water and dissolution and cementation. Wow. Yeah. Kids, if there's kids watching, get a look around for those sedimentary rocks because that makes you remember that at one time around here, there was an ocean. Who knew? An equatorial sea. Wow. How about uh, this guy seems to have, I think this is also right. sedimentary, yes. is that and right? You will, you will find fossils in sedimentary rocks. This um, one is like this a This one's full tunnel. of fossils. There's a, there's a worm burrow, there's brachiopods, and uh, all sorts of little critters. Wow. Uh, it's called a fossil hash. So that's kind of a... And you will find this stuff in Oneonta all over the place. You don't have to look far. Yeah. You can just look at our church building. Uh, and just Just look at the limestones and you will just see fossils everywhere. And this is another... Oh, oh that's a biggie. Yeah. Metamorphic, right? Yes, that's a high-grade metamorphic rock called Nice. And it's nice. very nice. Yes. Very nice. But it has a um, G in the front. And there's just a lot of heat and pressure, even more than... It took for this. Wow. To uh, very to cool. Form that. Yes. And how about this one is very pretty. Yeah, that's a uh, that's for, that's a basalt formed from a uh, ancient uh, lava. Basalt. And so right. it's it's very fine grained because it was extrusive. That means it came out of a volcano rather than this, <sighs> which stayed stayed in there. Wow. Underground. It is lovely. It's very smooth. So yeah, and you can see small crystals around the top and bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. So how old are all these rocks? Are they older than, I don't know, any of us? Older than this building? <laughs> Absolutely. How old? Um, well, I would say about a billion years for these what? two. What? 400 million years for oh these sandstones oh that are local. Goodness. Um, about five, 600 million years old. Wow. That's a long, um, long time. So yes, uh, geologic time is, is uh, quite central. That's amazing. So we can remember that God is older than all of these rocks. What? Absolutely. So eternity is a long, long, long time. Thank you, Mr. Geologist. You're welcome. Dear God, thank you for all of these rocks and leaves and all the ways that we can learn from our beautiful creation, all about you and your love for all the creatures and the rocks and the leaves and the trees. Amen. So we're going to sing, God is so good. Good morning, everyone. The Hebrew scripture this morning is from Genesis 1, verse 1 through 25. 
It's the six days of creation and the Sabbath. Um, before I read this, something last night, I was re reading through this before going to bed. It reminded me of when I was in, I think, junior high, the, uh, the dramatic movie, The Bible in the Beginning, came out. And I can remember our youth fellowship took a trip. I think it was right after church. We left on Sunday afternoon down into New York City and went, went to one of the huge movie theaters. <clears throat> and we were sitting in the front row and that screen kind of came up over us and encircled us. I just remember the main thing I remember about that whole movie was in the beginning with the water splashing down and we thought for sure we were going to get soaked because of the water over top of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. <clears throat> God called the light day <clears throat> and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so, God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so, God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. The hymn is Creation Sings, which is printed in the back of the bulletin. standing if you are able for the gospel reading. <clears throat> the gospel is from John 1 verse 1 through 14. The word became flesh. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, 
but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Amen. Thank you so much, Alan. What a week, huh? I think the death toll is up to 49 now of people who have perished from effects of Hurricane Ida. Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama and New York and New Jersey and Connecticut and Pennsylvania. I know you all remember what a mess flooding can be from your experience with Hurricane Lee it was 10 years ago last week. Our hearts go out to our neighbors downstate and down south. It's a long cleanup, isn't it? Floods in, or in the Northeast in the, and in the South, fires in the Northwest, political firestorms in Texas. Now, I have always appreciated the very nuanced United Methodist stance on termination of pregnancy. You can find a whole paragraph, it's a long paragraph in our social principles on abortion which basically boils down to our long time stance that it should be safe, it should be legal, and it should be rare. Women need to have control of over, over our own bodies, amen? And this thing in the Texas law where any person can turn someone else in, my father grew up in what later became East Germany. And when after he emigrated to America, his childhood friends, had to deal daily with the Stasi, the East German secret police, who were always ready whenever a neighbor got the notion to report another neighbor. Not a good way to create a community. So we have floods in the Northeast and the South, fires in the Northwest, women's bodies suddenly not our own, and the pandemic rages on. EDs and ICUs are overflowing in the Southlands, same place where they have no power. Breakthrough infections, even among the fully vaccinated at times can be quite serious, although obviously not as life-threatening as the virus is to the vaccinated. How do we find the hope, the courage, the good news? to go forward in the face of these very daily and very serious challenges. We enter the season of creation. Everyone just take a moment to let out a huge sigh of relief. This is a time when even though the planet is under attack by the forces unleashed by climate change, we can find solace and peace in a simple walk in the woods. Welcome to a celebration of beauty. We are invited to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So this morning, one of my aims is to get this little Navajo prayer chant stuck in your head. And I don't know about you, but I think European Americans are the only people on earth that sing stock still. Most people in the world sing, they have to move their bodies while they sing, not just their mouths. So this, um, this is a prayer chant that comes with motions. So you can do them even while seated. Okay, here's how it goes. Now I walk in beauty. Beauty is before me. Beauty is above me. Now I walk in beauty. 
beauty beauty is before me beauty is above me around me and below me we're going to sing this several times it's a little sneak preview of native american ministry sunday which comes up in two weeks this chant surrounds both listener and singer with god's presence as revealed in the beauty of the natural world, the colors, the light, the sounds, the smells of God's beautiful creation. God is revealed in every leaf and rock, each animal and plant in their infinite variety, the soaring mountains, the deep and quiet lakes, the brooks as they sing over rocks, the rustle of branches in the wind, all proclaim the presence, the loving energy of their creator. Now I walk in beauty, beauty is before me, beauty is above me, around me, and below me. John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement, called us the people of the book. And our book begins with a story that says over and over again that the universe began in beauty. God the creator is an artist. As the creator carefully sets the lights into the sky, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. As God flings the stars into the constellations, as God fills the seas with swimming things and the skies with flying things and gets the divine hands into the dirt and fashions the earth creatures. Each day ends the same way. God observes it is good. With this, the Hebrew scriptures begin. But Jesus and Paul and the early church only knew what we call the Old Testament in his Greek translation, the Septuagint. In Greek, there are two words for good, agathos and Kalos. Agathos defines the quality of something that is good in character, beneficial in effect, or useful in action. Well, kalos is a word that was reserved for something or someone that expresses goodness in a winsome or beautiful or attractive way. We might think of a person who's committed to their faith as aspiring to be good in that first sense. Certainly, we are trying to build character here at FUMC in all ages and stages of life, amen? But we have to notice that the Bible starts here in Genesis, not with demonstrations of moral goodness, but in gorgeous displays of the second kind of goodness, in beauty. And kalos is the Greek word God uses for good when God says it is good. It is very good in the Septuagint. That is the only Old Testament that Jesus and the early church knew. In these tumultuous and discouraging times, it helps a little bit, I think, to know the universe started in goodness, that God began in beauty. Here we go again. Ready? Now I walk in beauty. Beauty is before me, beauty is above me, around me, and below me. You're getting it, you're getting it, you're getting it good. <laughs> we can walk in beauty every day because we live in a beautiful part of the world, amen? Now I'm going to show you a picture that Mary Allen texted to me this week. It's actually not from around here, but this is her son, their son, Nate, walking in beauty, isn't he? They're out west, or he is out west with a friend, and I think that's a sunset, and you can see the ground is, you know, a little deserty. There's some colors in the ground, but look at the colors in the sky, right? How many, how often do we take the time to notice the colors in the sunset, which potentially are there every single night for us, right? Do we walk in the woods on a daily basis or even just sit down in our backyard, right? At sunset or maybe at sunrise, 
Uh, or even if we're driving in our cars, we can revel in the beauty of our home in these hills. I never get tired of looking at the hills. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Sometimes when I've gone up to Bassett Hospital to visit somebody and maybe they're not doing all that well and I'm feeling a little worried for them, but that drive back from Cooperstown to Oneana is just stunning, isn't it? There are several different ways and I change it up every once in a while and go a different way. And every single way is just breathtaking. If you look at all the seasons. Now, when we were coming back yesterday, we went on a little trip to the Finger Lakes. There are a few trees that are beginning to turn. So we can watch how that happens and the magic of the the palette of colors that we will see very soon. In these challenging and dispiriting times, I urge us all to take extra time and effort to nurture ourselves. In a few moments, we will nourish our souls with a taste of Jesus, body and blood, bread and cup, things of earth infused with eternal meaning and significance. We will be fed. But every day you can feed your soul, you can nourish your spirit with the beauty of our natural world, amen. Planet Earth is suffering, but planet Earth can also supply the remedy. The universe started in beauty and goodness, according to our faith. God is inviting us this season to partner with God's self to protect the beauty, to restore the goodness. Now, our first response to the horrors of the news, our reaction when we stop to deeply consider the condition of the environment today is often one of fear. I'm a little bit scared, aren't you, when we saw what happened this past week? It's, not, it's hard not to give in to fear when we read the current reports, when we think about what will happen as the planet continues to warm, as sea levels rise, as the forests get burned down. Maybe that's why we don't stop to think of it all that often. But no one ever made changes in behavior, long-term changes, based on fear. Love is the only motive strong enough to protect the world, amen? Love for the earth is a stronger motive than fear. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, perfect love casts out all fear. In the service of that love, Jesus' followers can join together with like-minded persons of spirit all across the globe in response to God's love as communicated in beauty. Okay, so one last time. Now I walk in beauty. Beauty is before me. Beauty is above me. Enjoy a beautiful musical offering from John.
Thank you, John. We're grateful to all the different ways in which people are uh, supporting our mission and ministry through the website, through our tithing app, through Tithely app, well, it could be a tithing app, and from bringing things right here into the church or sending them in the mail. Dear Lord, we thank you for all these gifts, for the ways in which our ministry, our mission is going out to all the world, especially we're thankful for the disaster relief funding that comes through UMCOR that is supported through our, our weekly gifts. Bless these gifts and bless our mission and our ministry that we can continue to spread your unconditional love to all. In Jesus' name, amen. Joys and concerns um, this morning at the first service. Um, where did I put it? Dave and Julie, friends of uh, Bob Benson, uh, healing for an, need healing from an accident. And today is Nancy's birthday and the Pence's anniversary. So wonderful. Happy birthday, Nance. And um, Nancy also had written these last week, and I forgot to read them. She asked for prayers for her brother-in-law, Gary, um, after, for comfort after the sudden death of his wife, Cheryl, and prayers for her brother, Allison, and family for Allison, and uh, her brother, David, and, and, his, and for Allison, uh, for safety from the storm. They live in Baton Rouge. And we'll lift up all the uh, prayer prayers in the bulletin. Also, prayers requested for Steve McCarthy, continued healing of his foot. Uh, so each prayer will end in your mercy. And we'll all respond here our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray for all working people of the world. We pray that their jobs may be safe, that they may be compensated fairly, they may have a voice in the governance of their job, and that they may take delight in their work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are still waiting to leave Afghanistan after the end of the ground conflict there. We pray that they may be able to be brought out safely and that the refugees may be given new homes and a new life wherever they do land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all affected by the recent Hurricane Ida, uh, those in the Southlands and in the Middle Atlantic states. Uh, we pray that the right help will come quickly, the power be restored, and all the cleanup would happen in a expeditious manner. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the women of Texas, especially black and brown and poor women who will not have many options in terms of health care. We pray that um, they may be advocated for by others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lift up all those on our prayer list plus Steve and David and Allison and Gary after the death of Cheryl. We pray for Bill and Catherine and Ramona, Maddie, Dottie and Pris, Martha and Bob and Shirley and Rose and Mark, Janet and Chris and Ellie. Surround each one of these that we have named and those we name in our hearts with your love, your compassion, and your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for the celebrations of this day, for birthdays, for Nancy, and the anniversaries for um, the Pences, Harry, and Ginny, and for all the others mentioned on our birthday and uh, anniversary list. And Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for the family of Janet Humphreys, who passed away on August 28th. We pray that you would surround her 
with your love and love, surround them with your love and your healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our sacrament of Holy Communion is in your bulletin, and I'd ask you to stand. Um, oh, I need, yeah, stand for the great Thanksgiving if you are able. The Creator be with you and with all creation. And also with you. Open your hearts. We open them to our Creator. Let us give thanks to the Maker of heaven and earth. It is right to join creation in thanking God. It is right to give you thanks, loving Creator. Your word is the impulse for all things to be, for space, stars, and stardust to appear, for earth to emerge from the deep, for life to be born of earth, for humans to be born of earth and the spirit. Your spirit is the life impulse in all things, renewing the barren, healing the wounded, groaning in anticipation of a new creation, stirring a new life born of water and the spirit. You chose to be born a human being, to become part of earth, to suffer, die, and rise from death, to redeem humankind, to renew creation, to affirm all born of spirit. Your presence is the living impulse in all things, the Christ deep among us, filling earth, land, sea, and air, filling every element and place, filling the grain and grape that we share today. Therefore, with angels and archangels, ancient voices in the forest, high voices in the sky, deep voices from the sea, and the whole company of creation, we proclaim your presence among us. Holy, 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 holy God, God of all life, life earth, earth and, and sea and sky are full of your presence and glorify your name. Amen. We remember that on the night in which Jesus was given up for us, he took bread. Whoops. After he had been broken it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. And also after supper, he took the cup again, giving God thanks and praise. He gave the cup to all his disciples saying, drink of this, all of you. This is the new, the covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. So by your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. So all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as forgiven and reconciled children of God, we pray our creator, redeemer and sustainer, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. Today, we invite you just to stay in your seats. Um, Kelly and I are going to come around and serve you. So go ahead and um, partake as soon as you receive the bread and as soon as you receive um, the cup. And at the sides of the sanctuary, you will find a place for the empties, a little tray that um, you may use.
And after supper, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Mount of Olives and sang a hymn. Our last hymn is number 2059 in the faith we sing. It's called, I am your mother. Just a couple of important announcements before we go into our commissioning. Next week, we change over to the fall service time. So this is our last Sunday in the summer service times. Uh, 8.15 will stay like it is, but at 9.25, we'll have our in-person, um, I think it's going to be in the art room, issues class, or now we're calling it Digging Deeper class with Margaret Parrish. And the Sunday school actually starts the following week, but then this service starts at 1030 next time, okay? And then uh, next Sunday also, we're gonna have a campfire at nine at 530 in the afternoon after the setup for the rummage. But on next Saturday is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And our sister church down the street at Elm Park is having a prayer service that morning, Saturday morning at 848. If anybody wants to go to that, you certainly would be welcome. Other announcements in the bulletin, including uh, Tom Talney and Bob Benson are doing a reading down in Walton, New York, uh, this Wednesday night. And so just pay attention to all the, all the bulletin announcements. So receive this commissioning and blessing. We'll do this responsibly. Christ calls you to be his disciples, to serve him with love and compassion to serve earth by caring for creation, honoring the planet God has created to be our home. We will follow our crucified Lord, listening for cries of injustice from earth and groaning with creation. We will follow the risen Christ 
to become partners in healing our planet. We will care for creation, nurturing our planet and celebrating life. Go in peace, serving Christ and loving earth. We go in peace, serving Christ and loving earth. Amen. Amen.